Hi, my name is Marika Kelly. And before I start my presentation, I just wanted to let you guys know that the handout and the cited page will be attached below. Okay, so my topic for this presentation is Sarah Kimball Knight. She was born April 19, 1666 to Captain Thomas Kimball and Elizabeth Trice. She had a solid education, which was really uncommon for women in that time. She gained experience in business and worked with her father at his firm. She later worked as a, sh as a shop manager and a copier of legal documents. She took over her father's firm when he died in 1689. She also married her husband, Richard Kimball, in 1689, and she had a daughter in 1689. Her name is not mentioned, but it is mentioned that she is an only child. Little is written of Sarah and Richard's life together. From October 2nd, 1704 to March 3rd, 1705, she took a journey on horseback to where her cousin lived. She went there to help her cousin's widow after he died to settle his land. She was 38 when this journey began, and she went from Boston to New Haven, then to New York. It was a five-month journey, and she kept a journal while on this journey. She did not publish this journal, but it was edited and published by Timothy Dwight, and that is titled The Private Journal of a Journey from Boston to New York in the Year of 1704, kept by Madame Knight. During this journey, she was accompanied by a post writer, so she was not alone in any of the time. She took a ferry ride during this journey, and she said, Here, by reason of a very high wind, we met with a great difficulty in getting over. The boat tossed exceedingly, and our horses capered at a very surprising rate, and set us all in a fright. That was dated Thursday, October 5th. She also had to walk and ride through very rough paths during this journey. She lodged with a Congregationalist minister for a night. There he gave her food and gave her a place to stay. She arrived in New Haven. It's not really clear on the exact day she arrived there, but it seems to be around December 21st. She stayed there for a while to spend time with her family that was there. She later then resumed to her journey to New York, which took three days from New Haven. In that time, it was very racial, and Sarah was not exempt from this. She was, she seemed to be a very racial person. She said about Connecticut's Native Americans, the most salvage or savage of all the salvages of that kind. She also was, I would say, appalled by how the slave owners treated the slaves. Not because they were rough or hard on the slaves, but because they were too nice to them. She was upset because she said that they shouldn't let the slaves sit at their dinner, ta dinner table. And she was also upset because they would eat out of the same bowl or they would eat the same food that the slave owners would eat. After she returned from this trip, she opened a writing school, which was said to have Benjamin Franklin. That's where he attended. She closed the school in 1714 because of the death of her husband, and she moved to Norwich, Connecticut, to be closer to her daughter and her mother. Sarah Kimball Knight died on September 25th, 1727, at the age of 62, and she's buried in New London. In conclusion, Sarah was said to be very opinionated, prejudiced, and tartly statrical, but also alert, keenly observant, and often wryly humorous. Her journal is also considered one of the most authentic chronicles of the 18th century colonial life in America. Thank you for watching.